Hello, here I am with my insects journal. I don't know if you remember, but when I did the flip through, I showed this page that had this um, amazing watermark on it that I felt looked like um, a woman or a beetle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn her into a dragonfly or a damselfly. So what I've got here is I've got some tracing paper down here. I'm just going to trace around the lines. And then I'm going to um, place stuff on some cardboard. So I've got a cardboard stencil. I don't need to do both sides, but I will anyway. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do one side and then flip it. So that I've got, so it's symmetrical. Which it's more or less is actually. And now I'm drawing out where I want the wings to go. I like dragonflies and damselflies. They have two sets of lovely wings. There is folklore that says that they have an extra set of wings to allow them to carry angels on their backs with them. So here I am. I've cut out the cardboard, which I'm going to use as a template. So I'm just carefully drawing around it. Now on the right hand side here you can see some washi tape. That does cause me some problems later on and I'll show you what I do about it. So basically I draw around and then I'm going to flip it and draw around the other side. And this way I'll get a nice symmetrical drawing. And as you can see it's following that line of the watermark. I don't know what caused the watermark, but it does have some weird um, effects to, on the paint as I'm painting it. You'll see what I mean later on. So I'm just going over the wings again, because they're not so clear. And so that is a quick way to make your your um, whatever you're drawing symmetrical. If, you, if say, you want to do a butterfly and you want that to be symmetrical, just do one side and then flip it over and do the other side. So that's the outline in. Now I'm going to come along with my watercolours. I've got my pan here, my water, and I'm going to start off by putting down some light colours at first. The paper is very absorbent. It isn't sized like watercolour paper. So the effects aren't quite as true as, as you would get with painting on normal watercolour paper. But I quite like the way that the paper sucks up all the colour like this. It's beautiful. And I don't mind if there's some inconsistencies. That's okay. It doesn't have to be a perfect painting. I just want her to be complete. <laughs> it was bugging me, bugging me. <laughs> I've got one page in my insect journal that wasn't complete. I've had a lovely time working on this. I've had a couple of days where I've struggled a bit with my art. Um, I've been working on videos. In fact, I've recorded two very long videos that I'm not entirely sure of whether they will go up at all because I'm not very happy with the results. Isn't that strange how that happens sometimes? So um, I've zoomed on a little bit here. I've put in her clothing. So I'm going for lovely those lovely colours that dragonflies and damselflies have, that lovely blue, the turquoise blue with a hint of shimmer. It's gorgeous. So I'm just going round. Um, I put some light blue on and now I'm going around putting some shape on now. Giving her a bit of a bust and accentuating her waist. And now I'm going around the edges to make that round shape. Turning the book around to make it a bit easier. And I want to avoid getting my hand in the paint. Right, so I've done that. And now I'm going to work on the... I think I'm going to work on the arms and hair. And this is where I struggle a little bit. For some reason, the paint suddenly starts pulling downwards. And it's very, very weird. It don't, won't go on in some places, but then it pulls down. Can you see it pulling down where I'm not putting it? Most strange. 
I'm just putting in some dark areas of the eyes and the nose. Now, this is very, very tiny. So, And also, there's this crease down the middle that's causing problems. So, the, the face isn't perfect. It's a bit of a shame, but never mind. And now I'm going in with some more um, skin colour for the arms. The same thing happened here. For some reason, it sucked up the colour in one area. So I have no idea what's caused this uh, watermark. But there we go. Doesn't matter. It's the magic of an altered book. You go, you work with what you have and do your best. I did wonder whether I could go over it with um, gesso and go over it again, but I think that will spoil it a bit. Just putting in some more of the features. And now I'm putting in the veins in the wings. And I'm using... Um, what pen is that? It's a fine nibbed pit pen and it's waterproof, which is ideal for this. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to add some colour into some of the um, areas within the veins, almost like panes in stained glass, because sometimes you can see that on an insect wing. It's almost as if they're a different facet. They catch the light differently. So that's what I'm expressing here. So I'm slightly off the page here, but I will move further down in a moment. There. Um, I've done some on both sides. Now I'm adding some more greeny colours. I'm varying the colours that I'm using. I tend to associate dragonflies with water. And I think these colours are lovely and water uh, representative. I do like the fact that the writing is still visible through this through the wings. This is sap green I'm using. It's a colour I like to use a lot. I haven't seen any damselflies or dragonflies this year, but I've not been out that much in that sort of environment. Now, what I'm going to do is, around the figure, I'm going to put down some water, watered-down gesso to outline it further and to knock back more of that writing. So using a flat brush, this is gesso mixed with some gloss medium. I'm going into the corner here. There. And I'm spreading out the paint. I do this all the way round. I do it more than once as well because I think I do about three layers of it. You won't see all of that. I'll cut all of that out. But what I do is I do it in three layers because I have it more opaque nearer the centre of the figure and then getting less opaque as I come further out. Let's go very carefully over that. Very difficult when you're so near the figure.
I'm now coming in with some coloured pencil. So I've done all of that painting. You see what I mean? Nearer the figure, it's the writing is less visible. But as you, go, as you come further out to the bottom where my finger is, the writing is almost visible. Anyway, so I'm going through with my, these are my Derwent Pro Colour Pencils. I do believe I love them. I'm just reinforcing some more of these shadows. And that colour, it says it's midnight blue. Um, there are some interesting marks still on the on the figure now from the whatever caused the stain in the middle. I'm assuming it was glue, but I don't know. I would have thought glue would have res resisted the colour going on rather than attract it, but who knows. And now I've come in with a more aqua colour. I had talked about in my last video that I intended to do a series of videos on faces in art journaling. I'm still working on that. So watch this space. It's going to be a good series once I get a few of my problems ironed out. Now I've got my pen out. Here we are. And I'm just going to reinforce some of these lines and I'm going to accentuate some of them to make them stand out a bit more. I'm not going to do that all over. I'm just going to give a heavier line in certain areas. Especially around the body where the wings are attached to the body. I'm going to work on that area. I'm just working on these for the moment. making sure you can see that one wing overlaps the other. And this is where I accentuate nearer the body. So I start off with a darker line and I fade it out as so I go further around. I've also, with pencil, I've gone into the areas of the wing and added some dark blue faintly so that there appears to be some depth there. I could happily do this all day, but I have to remember the paper is very, very old and um, it's delicate, so it will end up causing holes if I carry on. So I need to stop at some point before any damage occurs. But I do like the depth I've achieved here. You can see it. Right, so that part of the page is finished. Now I'm adding some napkin. And I'm just going to add some flowers. Uh, what I do is I put a dab of PVA glue down and I put the napkin on that, so that holds it in place. And then I go over the top of the napkin with PVA glue and the glue seeps through the napkin and holds it in place. I just trim off the edges. I'm doing a little bit on this side, a little bit on the right hand side and a little bit on top, but you'll see that in a moment. In case you haven't seen it, this is how I cut out some parts of napkin that I want to use. I just use some water, clear water, and I draw around the elements I want to keep. So I'm just going for this pretty little corner here. And then you can tear it apart. Missed a little bit there, I'm going to just do that. And then I can put that down there like that. So it gives lovely soft edges to your napkins. Right, so PVA glue down. I put the napkin on in place. 
and now I can paint glue through it, like so. And I'll lose that little purple tulip, but that goes up at the top, so it doesn't matter. There, I'll use that later. And so, once it's dried a little bit, I can press it down a bit more with some greaseproof paper. There, the tulip's going up top, but you can't see that just now. And once it's all dry, I can trim off all these rough edges. I'm adding a little bit more down at the bottom here. Dab of glue. I'm going to pop that down there. I think that fills that space up quite nicely. Now I feel that the flowers on the right hand side look a little bit odd and out of place and um, disproportionate, even though they're from the same napkin. So I'm going to add a little bit there and that ties them all together and that solved that problem. So all I need to do is allow it to dry and then trim off all the edges. And here it is. I love it. It's been so different to work on this. I really enjoyed it. It's quite good fun. I didn't mind the challenges of the funny texture that the mark made. It was something new for me to try. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thank you very much for watching. Do leave a like, a like and let me know what you think about it down below. I'd love to hear. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.